What's up everyone? Sam here from bitebybite.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to solve the word ladder problem. And on February 3rd I'm teaching a free masterclass called the Four Horsemen of the Whiteboarding Apocalypse at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Totally free. Go to bitebybite.com slash masterclass to sign up if you haven't already. Alright, in this problem we are given a pair of words, we're given a start word and an end word, and we are going to try and find if there is a way, and if so, what the fastest way is for us to get from the start word to end word by only modifying one character at a time. So basically you can see we have our start word is hit and our end word is cog, and then we have this dictionary of words here. And so we want to basically, we can modify one letter at a time, and so like hit might become hot, Hot could become lot, lot could become log, and log could become cog. Right, so we're only modifying one letter each time, and by doing that we're basically finding this path. And so our return value in this case would be a list of the words from the start to the very end. So it would be like hit, hot, etc. And so that's the problem that we're trying to solve here and so how are we going to actually approach this problem? So let's look at this first of all as always we want to make sure that we're clear on what the problem definition is because we want to make sure that we clearly understand what it is that we're actually being asked to do. So in this case specifically we are looking for what is the shortest path from the start word so this is like start and this is end. And we're looking for what is the shortest path from the start word to the end word. And we actually want the path itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to return a list of strings that represent all of the, you know, the path from the beginning to the end. And so our function is going to look something like we're going to take in a start string and an end string. And then we're also going to take in a dictionary which is a list of strings, right? And then we're going to return at the end a list of strings. So if this were Java, we'd have like a list of strings. And we should also be doubly clear here because in leak code, the way that this actually works is that if we have multiple different valid paths, we want to return all of those paths, right? So we don't just want to return the only path. And so we might actually, want to have, if there were two paths of the same length, we might want to have something like list of list of strings because that's going to allow us to return all of the possible transformations, right? And so what is going to be our approach here now? Now that we have our function definition in place, let's think about this problem. and. Because this is a really sort of challenging problem on the surface, I'm going to think about like, is there a way that we can sort of break this down? Or honestly, first of all, let me just look at like what a brute force solution would be. And so this is a great example of one where can I write a function that will tell us whether a series of steps is valid or not? Yes, right? Because all I have to do is say, like, let me say, I, let's say I gave you a list of words. I give you hot, then I give you dot, then I give you log. And all you have to do is say, does this, you have to basically say three things. You have to say, does this start with our starting word? Does it end with our ending word? And are all of the steps possible? Right, so let me look here. It would be easy for me to say, okay, this step is possible. It's easy for me to check the first and last, right? It's easy for me to confirm that, you know, hit is the first one and cog is the last one or not and I can just throw out anything where that's not the case but when I get here I can see okay if I just draw the words uh, if I just align the words I can see like that there's basically this is not the same and this is not the same and so what that tells me is that this is not a logical step and so I can't make this logical step which means that this whole input or this whole possible solution is not valid and so when we're looking at a brute force solution in general, it's pretty easy for me to just say, okay, let me try generating all the possible combinations. 
Let me try generating all the possible combinations of these. And I'm going to see, is any, of those do, is any of those combinations valid? And what are all of the combinations that are, of the, that are the shortest length? Right, so that would be sort of a brute force approach we could take. But let's see if we can do a little bit better here. And so right now, we know that we're looking for a path, right? We're basically looking at the path from one word to the other word. And so immediately that strikes me as essentially like a searching problem, right? It strikes me as probably, you know, a depth first search or breadth first search kind of thing because I'm looking for that path. And because I'm looking for the shortest path, I'm immediately thinking, how could I do this using breadth first search? This breadth first search is great when we want to find the shortest path. Depth first search is great when we is slightly, I find depth first search slightly easier to implement. So I'll use that as a generic one where we're looking for like all the paths because either one works when you're looking for all the paths, but depth first search is easier when one, just in general, in my opinion, and you're not looking for the shortest path. And two, I find it slightly easier when you actually want to, when you actually want to find the path itself. Right, like rather than breadth first search is a little bit easier if you're just trying to find the length of the path or find whether a path exists. Depth first search is a little bit easier when you actually want to recreate that path. But in this case, I'm thinking breadth first search. And then the question is, what am I searching for? So I basically have, I'm starting with hit. And then I want to look at like all of the adjacent possible, adjacent possibilities, right? And so in this case, I could go to hop. Right, so hit, I could go to hot. And can I go to any other ones? No, right? It's pretty obvious looking at this because, you know, the, none of these other ones have a middle letter that's an I. And so, you know, I'm gonna say, we can't do that. But then from hot, where can we go? We could go to dot. Or we could go to lot. Now from each of these, where could we go? Well, you know, from dot, and I'm, I'm also assuming that, you know, I'm sort of eliminating the ones that I've already visited because this could go back here, this could go back here, this could go back here, and then from dot, I could go to lot, or I could go to log, or I could go to hot, right? And then from lot, I could go to dot, I could go to hot, or I can go to log as well. And then from log, I can go to either of these or I can go to cog. And with our search, I've basically, what you can see here is I've created like a graph, right? And so we would basically say, okay, let me search for cog. So I'm gonna do like boom, 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 boom. That would be one option. Or I could do boom, 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 boom. And these are two different paths both of which are the same length and both of which are valid. And I can find those by searching once I have this graph. But the question is, how do we create this graph? And so this is gonna be something where really what we're wondering is when we have a specific word, what are all of the possible neighbors to that word, right? And so if we break this down, we can basically write two functions. We can have a, you know, let me do this in black. We could have a search function that start that has a start and an end you know that basically has the start word and the end word and is going to return the path and then we could have a function that's like find adjacent and so this is all it's going to do is it's going to take in a string so like, or a, you know, word. And it'll take in the dictionary. And what find adjacent does is it's going to find all of the like next possible words. So basically, if we, we don't actually have to construct the graph at all, we can just imagine like that find adjacent is gonna find all of the neighbors. And so with this, our, it actually becomes really easy for us to solve this because how do we write find adjacent? Well, all we really have to do is go through for the word, we're just gonna have to iterate through this whole thing and say, you know, what are all the words that are one different from it? Right, it's not super difficult for us to do. And then when we have our search, we're going to have to keep a list of like what words we've visited before, but it actually becomes pretty easy to do that as a breadth first search or a depth first search because now we're having, rather than having to figure out like, okay, what are all the next possibilities? All we have to do is 
call this find adjacent, it tells us what all the neighbors are, and then that's gonna allow us to do that search. And so that's basically all there is to this problem. If you look at like what is gonna be the complexity here, essentially every time we need to find the adjacent ones, we're gonna to have to iterate over all these strings. And so that's gonna be O of n time. And then based, as we're doing the search, essentially for each of these, or for each of the um, steps, we're gonna to have to iterate over all of the uh, dictionary. And so depending on the length of the dictionary, this may be really slow or really fast. If our dictionary is super, super long, another option that we have is we could say that, you know, let me try taking our word like hit and let me try just generating all of the possibilities. So I could say, you know, something like this. And then I could try modifying the second character I could do. Et cetera, et cetera. And so depending on the length of the words and depending on the size of the dictionary, that might be more efficient. But in terms of the complexity, we're basically going to be, you know, for, a, for any of these searches, we're essentially going to have a, you know, O of V plus E runtime, because we're basically saying like, you know, we have MV in this case is going to essentially be the length of the dictionary. And E is going to be basically the number of words because at most the number of neighbors you have is the number of words. So it's basically length of dictionary plus length of dictionary times, you know, the, the amount of time it takes to do this, which is length of dictionary. So we're essentially going to have O of, you know, if this is D, we would have O of D squared, essentially for our time complexity of doing this. And so hopefully this all makes sense. You can see basically what I did here is I just like sort of took the problem and tried to break it down into uh, smaller and smaller pieces until I could actually reconstruct it and put it back together. We will include again the code for this so you'll be able to see for yourself. And I would encourage you to work through this uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for sticking with me to the end here. If you enjoyed this and want a ton more from me, go to bitebybyte.com slash masterclass, where you can sign up for our Four Horsemen of the Whiteboarding Apocalypse Masterclass that I'm teaching on February 3rd. I really hope to see you there. And if you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video.